In today's video, we will learn how to run machine learning experiment on high performance computing environment. To do so, we will use Compute Canada services which are geared toward researcher. We will go through the following steps. First, we're going to get access to a supercomputer. Um, then we're going to set up the, our, our environment by downloading some code. Then we're going to transfer data that we need to analyze. After that, we're going to redesign the code that we already created for parallelism. We're going to schedule the jobs uh, using Slurm. And finally, we're going to run and monitor those jobs. The first step is to gain access to a supercomputer. Depending on the service you want to go for, you will need to go through different uh, security checks. In the case of Compute Canada, you will need to find a professor uh, with an account that can sponsor you. So uh, what you really need to do is find this professor, fill up this form. So you read all of this and then uh, you submit this, this, um, this form and you need to uh, tell your professor uh, that uh, they, you submitted the form and that they, they, you need a sponsor. Once you submit the form and the professor accepts you, uh, you will be able to access your panel um, and your administrative panel and you're going to have access to this thing which is your username and um, that's pretty much all you need. You, need. you have this username and then you have your password and uh, you will have access to any of the supercomputer in the Compute Canada um, clusters. So let's look at some of them that are uh, available. We have uh, Cedar, we have Graham, you have Beluga Negra. Um, I usually tend to take the one that is closest to me so that uh, we have less latency when we send jobs. Uh, this one is at the University of Toronto, Niagara, so I'm going to choose uh, Beluga instead, but with one account you have access to all of them. Um, and what you really need is this thing, the, the logging node. Right, you're going to have to enter your password. And there we go. Uh, so uh, you have now access to the Beluga uh, cluster. So depending on, on, on if you're not using Compute Canada, if you're using another service, it will need to be the same way. You get credential and you get uh, over there. Now that you have access to a node in the supercomputer, the next step is to bring in the code and set up your environment. The, the easiest way to do that is to uh, have a remote repository where you have already developed the code and uh, you just get pull it. So let's navigate a bit in this thing. Uh, we're gonna move into the project. And then usually it's the name of the professor that will be here. And I will find my username somewhere in there. And then over here, I will see a bunch of repo that I've uh, pulled. Um, now if we take, let's say, this repository, we can uh, clone it. Just gonna copy that. Okay, and we're gonna be able to get clone it over here. So um, it will clone it over here, and uh, you will have access to all of your your code. I, I prefer this way than to either develop it over there or to um, uh, to zip the file and, and put it into the the, the supercomputer because uh, with this I can, if it ever there's something to change, I change it locally, I do it fast, and then I, I push it and I can pull it over here. Um, I will not suggest to code uh, anything in uh, the, when you're in the login node of the supercomputer because sometimes it's overloaded of uh, computation and there's a, a, a lag between you and the computer, um, so it's not ideal. And that's it, we're done. So if you ls, we have now access to the artificial intelligence poultry and we have access to all of this. So this is how you set up your environment. Once you have your code all set up, you usually want to plug it into some kind of data source. Uh, there is many ways of doing it. I will show you one of them that is recommended by Compute Canada. So we're going to make use of um, Globus. Um, this is kind of a FTP uh, service which work well for large amount of data. Uh, so if you have a Compute Canada account, you will have access directly to that service, or I uh, greatly recommend. So what you need to do first, uh, there's three steps. You need to download the client, right? And then you uh, need to set it up um, on your computer. So here, 
I'm doing Globus Connect personal uh, start. So my um, uh, Glo the Globus uh, account will have access to my personal computer right now. The second step is to go over here in the endpoints and then set up your endpoints. So you, here I have my research laptop and here I have my um, Beluga account, right? So you set both of them. And uh, now what you can do is you can connect them. So now I'm gonna have access to my personal computer and here I want to have access to the Compute Canada computer. I need to authenticate again. Good, so should get access to that, and I will be able to see uh, the stuff that are inside uh, the supercomputer um, for my personal project. So we're going to be able to see the directory, which is a clone over here. So um, we can delete. We can do all kind of operation over here. So just be careful. Now we can take the data and put it here. Um, it's already in there. Um, so that's it. So there you go, you can now easily transfer the file from your computer or any other endpoint to the supercomputer. So most of the time we design our code uh, without parallelism in mind. Um, depending on uh, with what you, your code is written, you will need to make some uh, varying amount of adjustment. So my code base right now is a design like this. We have a data source that I just downloaded. There's a feature generation um, step where I take uh, uh, code from a library and I apply it to this data set this will generate me a data frame right of all the participant which I can then use in um, the rest of my code which is written in Python so here I have a, a first a step which is to find the best classifier for this data set using a leave one subject out cross validation scheme so I'm gonna take this uh, data frame I'm gonna turn to it and then this will output which is the best classifier and then usually what I want to do is I want to uh, I want to quantify the performance of the classifier and it's um, it's a it's a characteristic. So I'm doing some bootstrap resampling over here, some permutation testing, and uh, getting out uh, the feature weights. And then I pickle all of these so I can reuse that, uh, them afterward. Um, those are the heavy. Um, those three actually are the heavy lifter. This one is easy. This one is not so bad. Um, so that's what it looked like. So I have to uh, parallelize this guy and I have to parallelize uh, those four. So let's look at the MATLAB uh, portion. So here we are. This is the MATLAB code to generate the feature. Uh, MATLAB has some neat uh, way of doing the uh, parallelism um, if you don't have to dig too much into it. If you want to uh, uh, parallelize the, the for loop iteration, it's fine. If you want to go deeper, it's a bit clunky. In our case, we can design the parallelism uh, fairly easily uh, for um, the generate feature uh, script. So the first thing we need, uh, we need to do some setup. So here I have some R-coded uh, path. Uh, with here, this is a library I'm going to use. This is the number of core I'm going to I'm going to need. Uh, so here I'm adding the path to um, uh, to the MATLAB path of uh, for the script. We need to do that uh, because each node that will run your script will not know the path of anything. So you have to do this kind of part. Um, there was some bug in the cluster code of MATLAB, so I need to disable some feature. And finally, this is the part that is important. I'm setting up um, my parallel pool of workers, and I want uh, 40 of them, so 40 cores. So this is important. Everything else here is not too bad. It's, not, it's a rest. It's the same thing as if I was to do it in one core or two core in my local computer. I had to change some path over here. I would have been a good idea to have uh, this part kind of uh, in the config, but now it's, it's going to do. And after that, the only change that I need is to say which what, which part of the code needs to be parallelized. And in this case, you just need to use a part 4. And this is where I'm doing the parallelization. So I'm going to turn to every participant in parallel. And that's it. So here, this whole thing is similar than if I was to run it in uh, on my local computer, um, except it will run on, on 40 cores instead of, of two. And finally, once this parallelization is done, I'm gonna have the output file of each participant, and here I'm concatenating them into one big file um, 
so that the rest of the the uh, the processes can can use it. So it's fairly simple in MATLAB. Let's now look at the Python portion. So Python is even easier um, to parallelize. There's many way um, because I'm using Scikit-Learn. Uh, there's um, there are things that you can do out of the box, uh, but I will strongly suggest everyone to take a look at Dask. Uh, I'm gonna port some of my code to Dask to uh, to ease a bit uh, the parallelization jobs. So the only part, the only thing that you really need to do here with Scikit-Learn is uh, this thing. You say what you want to parallelize. So here, I want to do joblib parallel backend. I want to use the lucky one, and this one is um, the default and it will uh, it will just work on on the node um, there's there's different kind of backend you can use the das backend uh, which is a bit more powerful if you have many nodes um, and here i want to parallelize the fitting because here this is usually used with a grid search so this dot fit will fit many classifier at the same time uh, this is one way if we look at um, another way of doing it with multiprocessor from uh, python um, let's look at the bootstrap. The bootstrap. So here, um, this is the bootstrap interval. The bootstrap interval, I need to run the same thing a thousand times, uh, usually. Um, so what do I need to do? You need to do some setup, right? To say how many um, processes you need. Here, I say that I want um, 40. Well, I, actually, I'm going to take whatever slurm... Um, uh, whatever I configured as the number of CPU I need and I'm going to put it here so I'm going to have my parallel pool and after that this is usually what it look like you apply and then you get right so here I'm doing pool.apply async and I apply the function and those are the parameter so and then I iterate in the list comprehension and I'm going to do bootstrap classify and the bootstrap classify is like one run of my thing so I'm going to resample I'm going to get whatever I need to get and then I'm going to return whatever I need to return um, and that's it so I get the result this is not what your data right because this is kind of saved and you need to get them out and then you're going to get those things and then you can do the rest of your calculation so it's a mix, mix of the two mix of scikit-learn job lib and mix of multiprocessor all right good so um now we're going to look at the scheduling job using Slurm. So what's Slurm? A Slurm is uh, the scheduler. So every supercomputer will have a scheduling software that will prioritize and allocate resources for efficiently for jobs. In most cases, the scheduler will be Slurm, um, which is quite simple um, to pick up. So let's look at a simple. Uh, uh, let's look at a sample Slurm file, which will be used to uh, give to um, the scheduler. So that will define what your job look like. So this one, task zero generate feature that I sell. This is just a bash file with a bunch of particularities. Um, those are the command that you need to give uh, for um, uh, the, the Slurm scheduler. And this is the code that you want to run. Um, and usually this one, that when you have S run, this is where you're gonna have your, your parallelization. After that, before that and after is uh, either the the setup and the cleanup. So let's look at this weird part over here. You say it's a bin, uh, it's a bash a script, and then you you uh, set up your parameter. The first one, you give a name uh, that makes sense. So here, this is make feature. Uh, this is for you when you're going to get emails because you can get emails of when your job is going to be run. You say for which account it is. You say for how many, what is the wall time of your um, your thing. So it's in day, hour. Um, minute and second uh, this is when the scheduler should um, this is the upper bound of the time it should take so if you put like 30 days um, you will most likely run to completion however the scheduler will have a hard, hard time giving you some resources if you put too low and you uh, underestimate the time that it take uh, most likely your job will fail so there's a there's a wiggle room here that you need to figure out um, that's it. So here, this is how many nodes that you want. In the Beluga cluster, one node is 40 cores. Um, so this is one thing that you need to take into consideration. Here, it's the number of tasks that you want to to run of the same thing. Here, it's the number of the CPU per task. So here, I want to run 40 
CPU per task, I only have one task. Here is the number of memory that you want in megabyte. And finally, it's a mailing um, information so that uh, Slurm can send you email uh, telling you if a job began, if a job had problem, if a job ended. And that's it. Over here, I'm, um, I'm running my stuff. So generate feature um, script. And before that, I'm setting up MATLAB properly. Uh, every every node that you're going to get into will be uh, empty, so you need to do your stuff properly. So this is for MATLAB and for um, Python, it look kind of similar. Uh, this one will, will run for a bit longer than the previous one, and I'm doing some pip install over here. I should use pip install uh, requirement.txt, but that can uh, that work also um, for my case. And that's it. All right, good. Once your code is set up, uh, you get the data, your jobs are defined, you're ready to run your code in the, on the supercomputer. So this is what you were all waiting for. Um, there are a few Slurm commands that you are that are useful to know. So you have srun, uh, you have sbatch, you have sq that will tell you some information about whatever is running right now on the supercomputer. I've linked in the description some resource uh, for learning uh, about Slurm if you're interested. It's not too complicated. Um, to pick up So let's schedule our job uh, to run right now. So what you need to do is as batch and then you need to say which um, Which slurm file you want to run? I want to run task 0 generate feature SL and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna link all of them so I'm can I can define all of them and then just Go to sleep and not worry about anything because my pipeline will run sequentially. So here I schedule this one I say just batch it for uh, whatever and then if you see uh, most likely will not run right now so it's it's waiting because there's some other things that are higher priority that is that are running um, so I'm not gonna wait for the rest I'm gonna do dependency dependency and I'm gonna uh, give the job ID and I'm gonna directly schedule um, Define best param, right? So uh, define best param uh, require task zero. So task zero require nothing. Task one require task zero. Good. And then task two and the rest uh, require task one. So I'm gonna take the job ID from task one, right? And then I can give task two a. And then those are only just waiting for. Um, task one so I can give the same ID for them and there we go so they are all um, waiting to run right and you see those are waiting because of a dependency as one is waiting because of priority and what will happen is I'm gonna get email um, telling me at every step of the way which one began and which one is stopped and because I set the name properly I know what what at what spot my pipeline is running right that's it so I usually like to generate raw result first and then process them afterward locally uh, for the visualization or anything that doesn't record the supercomputer first to not overload it um, of useless stuff and uh, second if it's easier to get rapid feedback on a local computer than a cluster so for instance in this case I want to generate some useful visualization so I can just do it locally so um, I get my data that I've, I've uh, transferred from the supercomputer and I can uh, generate some nice figure, um, get some, um, some statistic, generate plot, play with it a bit um, and finally get, get my answer to my research question, right? It's easier to do it this way I find than um, on the computer. So that's it, I hope it helped. Um, if you have questions, just leave them in the comments and have a good week.